Yeah, thank you. So I'm uh, going to talk about industry and transition. So the first thing I want to focus on is this is around industry, not consumer products. So when we talk about the Internet of Things and stuff like that, there are a lot of things going on in the uh, consumer arena, and, but we're not going to talk about that. This presentation focuses on the effects in uh, industry from discrete aerospace through to the process industries as well as utilities, uh, power gen and, and water, water treatment. So I'm going to talk about the effect of this information dri driven enterprise and I will drill into the key business benefits. Never in my 40 some odd year career have I seen so many technologies impacting at the same time. And uh, we talk about it goes well beyond industrial Internet of Things and gets involved in other technologies that together have a traumatic impact on efficiency, business process automation, and business transformation, which really means new sources of revenue, new business models. So, oh, uh, this slide is just here to give a little uh, credibility to ARC and and uh, you know why should you be listening to me as I talk? Uh, ARC is, has 80 people worldwide, 50 of which are analysts, uh, and those analysts, uh, the vast majority of them, have deep, deep industry experience and come from the operating portion of the uh, of a business. Uh, I myself, uh, 10 years, uh, ran a maintenance department and was involved in implementing automation and industrial systems into uh, end user manufacturing businesses. So deep domain expertise, uh, we're essentially a think tank for manufacturing and industrial operations. All right, so I'm going to talk about, first I need to define the scope of the information driven enterprise. What do I mean by that? So there'll be a little bit of talk about that. And then I'll go into the technology changes that I'm referring to and it's, it's much more than industrial internet of things. Uh, and then I will delve into the business impact uh, because it, a cool technology may be interesting uh, for engineers. I myself am a, a bit of a geek and uh, really enjoy technology and technology change, but it isn't very useful unless it has a positive business impact. Okay. Um, ARC has been using this collaborative manufacturing model for well, close to 10 years from now, 10 years now. So I'm going to layer uh, the information-driven enterprise on top of this business model. Uh, I guess we should also remind people, we forgot to do this early, uh, please turn off your cell phones. <laughs> the uh, uh, layering the, the uh, three major value streams. So there's one which is uh, the supply chain, source, make, deliver. Another one is the operations, top floor to plant floor. And the third one, this is a three-dimensional model, so this is supposed to look like it's going in and out of the screen. It's the uh, design through to support. Uh, for the discrete industries, for people who make things, uh, that is the product life cycle. For those in the process industries who make stuff, the uh, design to support access is really about the plant life cycle, design of the plant. So there are various opportunities for uh, improving operations along those value streams. So one way to look at information flow, information flows across these three axes. Those are the sources of value for this extended enterprise. And the benefits come into the three different areas. So if I were to talk about predictive uh, maintenance just for a moment. So imagine an OEM having uh, a piece of equipment that was sold and installed in an end user. Now that OEM with the Internet of Things can get information about the performance of that asset in the operations. They can do condition monitoring and can uh, alarm and uh, the uh, end user tell them that things are 
you know, the, the machine isn't feeling well, it's a little sick, so and they can plan maintenance. So the effect of that is no unplanned downtime. Very dramatic effect for people in the continuous process industries, particularly refineries. Unplanned downtime is particularly ugly. Um, so that's one example of the optimization. It could also be uh, parameters from the machine could be loaded into an application and uh, optimize the performance and the throughput and the quality of that particular machine. Uh, the prisoner's process automation example would be the machine is not feeling well uh, and there is a integration with the enterprise asset management application, the maintenance management application, so that a work order is automatic generated and the planner can decide when to plan that particular work order to do the maintenance before it fails. And that automation uh, reduces a lot of manual entry and we all know man manual data entry is a big source of errors. Uh, and the data integrity inside an application. Uh, and then the business process transformation example would be the maker of that equipment can now start offering a service contract, a monthly fee or annual fee, and now it's a new source of revenue for the service of maintaining a, the condition of that asset for the customer. So the increasing flows of information across the axis uh, then it includes the business systems, the piece, particular piece of equipment, of course, we integrated with the people, uh, will, has the potential to transform manufacturing as we know it today. So uh, this slide just kind of talks about just a little bit the arc architecture for uh, this information-driven enterprise. And particularly here, the emphasis is on the industrial Internet of Things. Now, I put the industrial in front of that to remind us that I'm not talking about uh, uh, consumer products, uh, uh, I'm, you know, like Nest and, and those kinds of things, and the fit things that people have on their wrists and stuff like that. It's a different market. I'm really focused now in this discussion on, on industry and industrial applications. So we have intelligent assets. That means that there is some a processor in the asset, some memory, maybe software, uh, and that is connected up to some communications. Uh, we have a device management layer here. Now, in, in M to M, traditionally that means a direct link and, uh, you, you know, one machine to another machine or to a higher level system is typically what really happens. So, those point-to-point -point communications were simpler to manage. Now, if we extend it to an OEM with potentially tens of thousands of machines out there, uh, it becomes a much more complicated communications problem. And, uh, you know, of course, the machine manufacturer needs access to all, access to all 10,000, uh, but you want the end user to only have access to their machines as an example of the management that needs to occur at this level. There's, far more other things that need to occur. So there's this device management layer of software that's needed. Then on top of that, so there's applications, whether it be big data or more uh, specific applications around condition monitoring, and then the business, higher level business applications. So this is uh, uh, an ex the, the uh, recommended architecture as you go into the industrial internet of things in a more information driven enterprise. Uh, and I'd like to talk in this slide a little bit about the, the first one. This is kind of summarizes what we mean by each one of those layers in a little bit more detail. Um, but I am a little bit, become a little bit uh, jaded by the concept that we take all the data and sent from the machine and send it up to the cloud and have the cloud do the applications. Um, I think the machine has the capability to be somewhat autonomous to have a processor in there, to have so a software application that monitors its own health, and maybe even does some data collection. And when something is n not going well, that's when it uh, uh, involves the higher level application. So uh, I think this, this uh, uh, the in particular pieces of equipment have the opportunity to have some own real intelligence in there rather than just being a, a data transfer uh, mechanism. Um, yeah, so I'm going to talk, oh, yeah, 
And the, the bullet on the, the bottom bullet on this slide is that uh, all these technologies exist today. So there isn't, uh, the point I want to make is there is not a technology impediment to proceeding. It's more about understanding the business benefits and uh, justifying a good project to senior management uh, that has some financial return in proceeding. Uh, so there are no technology barriers, barriers at this point in time. So let me talk, you know, drill down a little bit. We have some high level concepts that I just talked about. So I'm gonna drill down a little bit, talk about an example. In this case, we have a machine vendor. Uh, the icon there is pumps. We like to talk about pumps. Everybody's seen pumps. We kind of can identify with that pretty well. Um, and there is a manufacturer who has a pump in their facility. There's software applications on it. There's some virtual, some tags, virtual machine. There's tags and stuff like that uh, that are used in the higher level applications, obviously. So one obvious thing that's happened is the uh, equipment manufacturer delivers the piece of hardware to the supplier who then puts it in their manufacturing operations. Now with the Internet of Things, their data can transfer back to the uh, vendor about the performance of that machine, the health of the machine, and uh, the vendor now can use this data not only to provide support to the end user, but they can monitor the performance of their own equipment, Maybe there was a little bit of problem with uh, the, the quality of the production, so they can make adjustments in more real time. See, they don't have to wait until, the issue here is, they don't have to wait until the end customer finds the problem, gets mad at the supplier, calls them up complaining about how lousy their equipment is, and you have a customer satisfaction issue, you as the OEM can be very proactive. You can identify the problem, and you know, particularly if the problem can be fixed via software, you can fix the problem before you have a customer. Issue. And that's done by sending update parameters and software back to the machine over the Internet of Things. And uh, you alert the issue, uh, the user when there are our issues, you provide additional services, so maybe when uh, the warranty is over, you offer an extended warranty and support through the internet, and uh, you can improve your design. And then improve the design is non-trivial here. There's, there's a concept I want to get across around closed loop PLM. N again, rather than wait for the customer to have a customer satisfaction problem, you can improve the performance of your product much more quickly. You get feedback and you can update your product much more quickly. So you have a much faster product life cycle effect. This means that your machine can move ahead of the competition in performance and capability much more quickly. You gain a core competitive advantage and you improve your market share. So it's an example of how uh, the Internet of Things can have a dramatic impact on revenue, uh, the P&L statement, and uh, as a result, stockholder value. So, now I'm going to shift gears a little bit, and I'm going to talk about technology change. Now, um, I have a smartphone, and uh, what I did is I looked at my own smartphone and made a list of the things that uh, I would have needed just a few years ago uh, as independent devices and, and now really all those things are obsoleted and replaced with my smartphone. Now, uh, I do have a few gray hairs, so uh, you know I, there are probably younger people in the audience that can make a much longer list than this. I, I'm not trying to say that this is a definitive list. I'm sure that there are, are uh, other applications, but these are just ones that are on my smartphone. And the point of the slide isn't that uh, uh, discussion of smartphones. It's about how an intelligent device and software on that intelligent device basically eats hardware. So you as an equipment manufacturer, uh, you may want to look at where your machine is, how it's used in a end user's application. 
and think of the other hardware devices that are around your equipment and think about the capability of basically improving the value of your piece of equipment with intelligence by adding software that essentially eats the other hardware in, in the, around the perimeter of your piece of equipment. Right? We've seen some of this happen in other industries with DCS systems and PLCs. Uh, I'm suggesting you go beyond that and look around your own particular piece of equipment. Uh, and this isn't all that difficult. I'm just going to go through a couple of slides of Intel. This is a, a computer and the footprint is a SD card. All right, so that's, we all have SD cards, I'm sure, in our PCs and stuff like that. So you get an idea how small that is. And uh, it's a full computer, Wi-Fi enabled. Uh, so you can add applications and software uh, to your device. This uh, quantity one uh, price for this is $50 US dollars. Obviously in quantity it would get a lot lower than that. So if you've got a machine that uh, goes for let's say a thousand US dollars, it's reasonable to add this from a cost viewpoint, to add this functionality and vastly improve the value of your product and potentially what you could uh, charge for it or gain market share. And this one is a little bit more substantial computer. It's a little bit larger footprint, but you can see there is a USB port on there so you can start talking about adding peripherals and stuff like that and have much more capable uh, uh, application on your equipment. In this one, uh, quantity one price, as I recall, and this may be a little dated, is uh, well under $100. So again, not very expensive. Uh, and you can add to your, uh, a lot of capability to your machine. Now, you know, like I said earlier, I have not seen in my 40 year career so many impactful technology changes occur at the same time. And then these particular technology changes are meant to be uh, fairly high level. I'm sure there are engineers in the audience who could make this list uh, a lot longer with uh, maybe communications technologies and some other technologies that are impacting particular industries and particular application areas. Uh, but these are all happening pretty much at the same time and it isn't just the industrial internet of things. When you start adding these together uh, there's a much more exponential impact on what can happen. Uh, and that whole software stack that I talked about earlier, the architecture for the Internet of Things, involves multiple of these technologies. And I'm just, I happen to ha like 3D scanning, so I'm just going to mention that one a little bit. Uh, there is a new uh, uh, type of 3D scanning that's uh, becoming popular, it was initially used on the consumer side in the Kinect that's used on the Xbox. Uh, are there any gamers in this audience who uh, have an Xbox? Anybody? Yeah, yeah, a few hands go on. All right. So if you have a Kinect, you already have this technology in your home. Uh, obviously, with the volumes that happened with the Xbox and the Kinect, uh, the price went down a learning curve pretty quickly. You can add structured light 3D scanning to your equipment for uh, well under 100 bucks. I think it's like a $20 cost or something like that. So now your piece of equipment can be aware of what's going on around it. Now, I'm not going to talk about applications for that right now, but one could start, you know, an innovative mind can start thinking about new applications. An obvious one may be safety, but on being a, a location aware and aware of what's moving around a piece of equipment uh, maybe augments uh, other applications in terms of uh, where people are, uh, material movement, safety, and stuff like that. So again, multiple technologies happening at the same time uh, can have dramatic impact on the benefit of using, uh, putting intelligence inside your uh, equipment. Okay. Now I want to talk about the business impact. The, uh, during this talk so far, I've been talking about equipment and OEMs and people who make equipment. 
And you end users out there are probably starting to think, well, you know, is Ralph going to say anything that I care about? All right. So the first two here, the optimization and business process automation, gets to the business benefits to end users. And then the third one, the business transformation, affects both. So uh, in this particular case, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the use of equipment uh, with, you, with the industrial Internet of Things in your manufacturing plant. This is a typical example where uh, you've got an enterprise level applications, you've got the plant floor on the bottom. The uh, uh, particular piece of equipment is in the plant floor part of the process. Again, we like pumps, so this is a pump example. Uh, you have a private cloud, the data is going up to the private cloud. That information is maybe used for uh, process optimization to improve yield or throughput. It's also used for condition monitoring uh, to anticipate a failure so you have no, no unplanned downtime. Uh, and it also can uh, provide information to the enterprise so uh, if some asset, some particular supplier is underperforming compared to other suppliers, maybe you can make some decisions about your purchasing or put some pressure on a uh, uh, an underperforming supplier. Uh, so that's the uh, business uh, optimization, optimization side of it. Uh, you can, uh, now I want to move into a little bit the OEM side of it, the machine manufacturer side of it, uh, the more business transformation side of uh, the inter this, this information driven enterprise. So in this case, uh, the information goes up to the private cloud, perhaps, or maybe directly up to a public cloud and to the uh, equipment manufacturer. And in this example, I'm going to talk about service provided by the OEM uh, and why that doesn't work now and why it could be a very good business proposition going forward. All right. So the uh, now situation uh, and this is a little bit explaining why it is a lousy idea today uh, typically run the failure you get a cascading breakage a little component cascades into a major failure unplanned downtime uh, it, you got two pass service a piece of equipment would be down for a week before it gets repaired we all know that this is totally unacceptable. You can't have a production operation down. That would impact revenue, would be very bad. This is why we have maintenance departments in an, OE, in, in an end user, because the uh, end user can't wait that long for a repair. All right? If it was IoT enabled, the OEM could be condition monitoring and anticipate the downtime, no unplanned downtime, one pass repair because the OEM already knows what's wrong with it. The first part is very problematic from a revenue viewpoint for the OEM. Uh, in here, it becomes very manageable because you can plan it. Uh, uh, you can, because you can anticipate the failure, you can schedule your workforce, level the wor workload, and it starts to make uh, much sense from a margin uh, viewpoint. And it also provides an opportunity for revenue growth with those extended uh, warranties. So ARC is expecting and forecasting early adoption by the OEMs because of this business process uh, improvement. So this is an example of how it would affect the P&L statement of the OEM in a positive way. This next slide addresses how it would affect the balance sheet of the OEM. If the OEM were to provide service, they'd have to have all kinds of inventory in regional depots nearby so they could respond quickly. That has a uh, negative effect on ROI, return on assets, because you have inventory as an asset, and it, uh, that in taking cash and putting it in inventory uh, would be a bad thing from a CFO viewpoint. When you can plan it, you can have much more of the inventory in a central warehouse. You can lower the inventory. So from a CFO perspective, this is CFO nirvana, I call, call it. Whenever you reduce inventory, turn inventory into cash, 
you improve return on assets, you improve the balance sheet, which improves the metrics that the Wall Street, the financial analysts, use to evaluate the value of the stock. When this happens, the stock price goes up, the C-suite is happy, and uh, they would want to support the adoption of the Internet of Things. So I talked about two examples kind of quickly. One where it affects the P&L statement, basically by generating additional revenue and controlling costs. Another one here where it improves the, the uh, balance sheet of the, of the uh, OEM. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, kind of the broader business processes. All right. Uh, and this is something to think about a little bit. Uh, the product design, put it out in the plan, uh, use industrial and IoT to get operating performance back. You don't wait for the customer to call up with complaints. By getting that information back, you have much shorter product life cycle. And you can iterate your product faster, and uh, we call that closed loop product life cycle management, rather than the old open loop where you have to wait for the dissatisfaction to come from your end user. And I want to extend that to plants. So the, the previous one was for people in the discrete industries. Uh, this one is really addressing plants where we go from, uh, and it's typical to use a 3D laser scan for the as-built conditions and then design your plant within that environment. Uh, uh, now, as you do the upgrade, you can take 3D laser scans. You can check that you're on spec, that you're on schedule. You can avoid rework and quality problems. And that lowers risk from the EPC's viewpoint and allows them to do progress payments too, based on the laser scans, and much shorter risk. So the, this is closed loop plant design and build, where the EPC, by continually doing laser scans as it's built, get to uh, shorter design the validation, vastly reduce the risk of uh, building a plan. And this slide is just here to provide a kind of a summary. I'm going quickly because I'm a little bit over time. The uh, increased information flows across the three supply chains. So you as an end user, we would suggest that you look at your three major value chains, look for opportunities for business process automation and integration of applications uh, to provide the benef business benefits around optimization and business process automation. Uh, and for OEMs, look for those business transformation issues. And my closing slide is basically that uh, we don't have a technology barrier. Adoption of this has been, is uneven if you look at industries. So anybody here who's in the semiconductor industry will be saying to me something like, uh, Ralph, this is not news. Uh, you know, the semiconductor industry has 10 million to $500 million tools and the uh, uh, equipment manufacturers have been using the industrial internet of things for years to monitor, monitor the performance of that equipment. So, uh, and they've been doing the business transformation, business process automation for a while. So in the semiconductor industry, this is a proven and established process. Uh, when we go into other industries, there's opportunity for improvement. Uh, so again, this is not a technology issue. It's a more of a leadership and a will to execute, uh, to see the vision, to see the opportunity to execute. And my uh, recommendation for those of you in leadership's position on Monday, you know, while you're here the next two, send the meeting notice out on Monday on your, the leadership team, have a meeting about the industrial internet of things, business transformation, and move forward in a, with a leadership position and, and grab hold of the huge opportunities that are available for you for business improvement. Thank you.